Welcome to the importance of visuals and teaching computational design and reducing bias. I am Patty Copian. Let's get going. A little bit about me. I am a design technology manager at HMC Architects. I have a background in architecture. That's building architecture, not computer science architecture. But I do have a experience in programming and data related uh, efforts in that field of architecture, engineering, and construction. And I'm a trainer and course author for related content like uh, BIM and coding. So a little bit about me, well, let's get started. Just a preamble here before we get going is that coding is everywhere these days and we cannot escape it. And we need to use it on our projects too, that is design projects. So we want to teach our staff in-house the value of programming, but we want to make them feel comfortable learning new things because sometimes people get intimidated. So this is the story of how it happened for our company. And just to give you kind of sense where we are, people think architects work as something like this, uh, Mr. Corbusier here drawing sketches. There's a lot of that, but this is what we really do day to day is making these 3D models with like a database built into them for every aspect of the model from like, you know, room data to wall data to door data, you name it. So it's a little more uh, data driven these days. So that's good, but it also means we have a lot more to configure. And what we want to do as designers is to take advantage of new technologies that allow us to do things like, you know, energy analysis of rooms, pathway analysis for optimized efficiency and flow. And we need to go a little further in how we use our software and how we use our tech stack to take advantage of that. And that's part of that's being better programmers and going beyond uh, software and using some basic level coding and scripting, not you know full on production level capacity. And that can open up a lot of options and efficiencies for using the existing software stacks and develop our and develop our best project. We want more developers to help us in this effort, but we don't have the capacity even the budget for them. So we want to teach our staff some basic coding so they can take it from there, at least kind of grow that user base. But we can't teach them like traditional coders because that might be a little too uh, overbearing, might be a little too much of a computer science course for them to, to use it, learn the way I did. So we want to remove the bias of how you teach people in coding. So they, they can learn the fundamentals, but at the same time, be sensitive to how they uh, are trying to jump into something that not, they are not familiar with. So um, there's an intimidation factor with coding. The intimidation factor of people, even if they're technically proficient, like engineers and architects with you know, a technical background, this is a totally different world for them. It might feel like you're trying to show them how to do like, you know, uh, some sophisticated math workflows. And this is kind of the face I get from people when I show them any amount of coding, a simple statement. Python code, it doesn't matter. So you have to be aware of that because a lot of people feel like this is how you approach a lot of new subjects and, and learning topics is, is, again, go back to computer science. It's usually given this very minimal kind of starting point, especially to fill out the rest. Great if you're trying to learn something thoroughly, uh, but sometimes this can be very off-putting. Most of the time it's off-putting to people who aren't familiar with it, where they feel like there's a bunch of steps missing and they don't know where to go from where they start. I can give any designer in my company uh, sketch pad and say, hey, you're designing an entire high rise hotel, and they'll do it. So they're comfortable with the idea of like, okay, use your knowledge and build things up, but they're not comfortable with the idea that uh, if they're learning something new, you have to give them all these like flex kind of training or uh, methods where you give them a very basic rudimentary starting point and you have to fill out the rest. That's not a great place to start. You will lose them, and that's uh, going to lose a lot of people who aren't familiar with coding. So we have to remove the barriers. There's a barrier in a way. You're going, to be very, uh, you're going to be less likely to try something new or do something different. You have to remove as many barriers as possible to provide help. So you have to make the first step non intimidating. Just make it easy, fun, just, you know, okay, let's stir up your imagination. And you have to emphasize visuals and graphics. Creative people, design people, they're more comfortable with that anyway. And you can show a lot of sophistication, sophisticated information in a graphical format that might be hard to do in text or spoken out loud. So graphics are your friend. And try different ways of training people and teaching people. The more, the better. They're not always going to learn the same way as you. And I would say this, do not use a text editor for teaching people how to do anything right away. It will stress them out. They, they don't like seeing this stuff uh, in text, even if it's not something hard to do in code. They've never seen it before. They don't know what to do with it. They're just, you're just going to make them walk away. Trust me on that, I know. So, like I said, use visual. In this case, we have the Pythagorean theorem, which can be taught both in a graphical geometric format like we have on the left, but also in code. So it's not as though it's one or the other, there's multiple ways to solve a problem. So you can always start with a visual reference so they have a counterpart and an analog they can dial into and then 
say, okay, let's move this in code, or how would you put this in code instead of starting straight from code, which might be disengaged from how they would view a problem. And what's really great is you can use something like a low code or a visual scripting format like this. This is Python. Uh, for those of you who are familiar with Python, pretty easy language to learn, but uh, if you never used it before, and this is how I started learning coding was through visual scripting. Uh, it's so much easier, I guess, to, to feel that like you can play around with nodes like this, uh, maybe integer and a loop and connect things. It feels a little more you, like you can play around with it and not like either you're right or you're wrong. So visual scripting uh, is a great starting point. I highly recommend everybody who wants to teach people to use code or learn it themselves to try this out because it's been a great asset to us. And that was a breakthrough. Once we realized visual scripting was this really easy way to get started, people were more comfortable with that. It was kind of a media approach. We can get going because the everything we do to this day is, is to BIM software, building information modeling. And the key software we use is Autodesk Revit, which uses data and geometry to create our models. That's what BIM is, building information, data and geometry. And we can tie it into this cloud looking guy on the left here called Dynamo, which is an open, uh, source tool to help you modify that data and geometry through code. And this is all Dynamo is. It's a bunch of visual scripting. There's inputs. Your code block would be the work you're putting in there and the output. It's that simple. And you can do something as simple in Dynamo for this software for Revit with you know calculations. If you want to do something as calculating lengths of a wall or something like that, you can do that here. And you get more sophisticated. You can put sliders and people can actually go into the visual scripting environment and play around with it. This is all through Dynamo's visual scripting. And people are like, oh, cool, I can add a slider and see points. And that's how you get them interested in code. Because you see here, we have some uh, integer values and uh, and things that are related to the code. It's a lot of the work is done for you, but they start seeing the relationships. And that's something very simple, easy to use, something that they have an analog for. It's like modeling like this. And you just take the example and move it forward. You have, like we had before, inputs, process, Output. In this case, the input are some coordinates. The process makes those coordinates into a rectangle and then multiplies that rectangle 100 times and then wraps floors and walls from our model into them to get something like this, a skyscraper. Um, that can be done in seconds, whereas if they did it themselves, it would take a while. So that's the kind of cool kind of, hey, make your own skyscraper approach that people really love because it's like, oh, I know what a building is. I know how long it will take me to design something like this, put it into a model format, put it into some documentation format. So this is the real quick way of getting to use something they're familiar with, in this case, building designs, and using something that's easy to use, like visual scripting, to remove those barriers, make them feel comfortable, and not teach them, like, again, like computer science students, because they're not. And you can go further from there in the same system, Dynamo, you can teach them how to use uh, Python scripting. It's in the, there's tools, there's built-in nodes that you can just type in code. So once they get comfortable with the visual scripting, they can start text scripting. That's when you introduce it, when they understand the concepts and feel comfortable with them, the first pass. And from there, you could make more sophisticated examples, in this case, beams that are slanted at an angle. That's very sophisticated model. But with some uh, tools like this, they can achieve things they couldn't achieve before, which is that back to that efficiency we were talking about earlier. How can they make the most of what they're doing without having to, you know, uh, use a new software, or, you know, hire a bunch of people to help us model this. This saves a lot of time and makes their dreams or visions uh, realizable. And from there, you could take it to generative design and, and create entire buildings. Like this example, visual scripting again, you can, create different iterations of a tower without having to model each and every one, study them, just say, put some parameters in here, give me some results, and they'll chart the best results on the graph, and that's under their control. Designers don't want the computer to tell them what to do, they want the computer to give them the information they can work with. And from there, you can even go as far as, you know, pathway analysis. Again, as you see in the bottom uh, here with all that, uh, those lines and blocks, that's all just a sophisticated visual scripting workflow they can use to get something that can optimize their, you know, floor space arrangements uh, for human traffic, which is something that they can only dream about right now that's at their fingertips um, if, once they learn the process. So what you can do to find success in your organization is use diagrams, documentation, and training content. The more images, the better. Be comfortable slipping out textual code and using graphics and visuals to communicate the code. Uh, because text is good once you get the hang of the logic, not the first thing. And contribute to open source projects. This is just a reminder that open source has helped me a lot here, and I think it'll help everybody else a lot here. So, you know, show them some love for these uh, projects. And that's a great way to remove barriers. Learn how your team works and provide the right tools. Again, make the first step not intimidating. Don't give them computer science challenge questions. Emphasize visuals. Graphics are your friend. The more, the better. 
Um, the more methods of training the people, the better. So maybe one method doesn't work. Maybe the visual scripting maybe doesn't work. Maybe you have to try a different approach, but just try it out and give a hoop. Fill in the steps. Hold their hand a little bit. Show them each and every step and give them options to try it out themselves. Here's some resources for learning the code. And here's my contact information. It was great talking with you all. Uh, reach out to me for any questions about you know visual scripting, low code, architecture of any kind, computer science or not. Thank you.